Okay, the next step, what we're going to do, is going to get out of the simulation from the previous step here, and we're going to go ahead and turn down the length of the part. Now, when we do this, we're going to use the upper B axis. Not for any other reason than we can, and to show you different ways of working within Top Solid. So I'm going to start by selecting the face I want to start turning at, and then using the Alt key on my keyboard, I'm going to select the end face that I want to finish turning at. And I'm going to right click and go to roughing. Now, what Top Solid is going to do in this case is it's going to pick up the roughing, it's going to pick up our tool, and it's going to generate our preview. Now, let's look at our preview for a second, because this is kind of neat. Here what's going to happen is we are going to turn down the part and notice, based on the tool orientation, this is showing the real condition of the part. From here, what we want to do is we want to maybe take this B-axis head and we want to rotate it 45 degrees. Nice. So to do that, I'm going to come into my comment section. And down here, these are just standard angular solutions. You can see as I click this, it turned the tool to have the insert facing the other way. Maybe what we want to do is we want to set this at 45 degrees instead. So let's hit New Angular Solution, and let's go to B, and let's just simply type 45. Maybe I want the insert facing forward in this case. Maybe I want it facing back. The choice is yours, and every change you make, you get to see dynamically over here to the right. And the reason we get to see this dynamically is because in this option here, I have Show Machine Preview in Position activated. I'm going to green check mark that. Once I validate this, now the software is creating the angular solution required to do turning with my B at 45 degrees. Now we have another thing that we're going to have to do here as well. We're going to have to make sure to set the correct driven point of our tool. But first, let's look at our updated toolpath. This is looking good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go into my settings, or my cutting conditions here. Of course, I'm going to uh, reuse the same cutting conditions as before, so let me show you a quick trick for that. I can just drag and drop that over to here. That's going to copy all the cutting conditions. And from there, I'm going to come into my gauges. And now I'm going to do some magic here. And what I want to change, basically, is this. You can see how the tool is, and you can see where my cursor is holding out of the tool. I want to change the driven point of the tool because I need it to be that theoretical intersection of the, uh, of the cutting edge in X and in Z. To do this, I'm going to start by duplicating the driven point and changing to my duplicated point. The reason I do this with a duplicated point is this way I always have the standard system points available to switch back to whenever I need to. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is select the new offset. And now over here, if I go on the screen again, you can see where my cursor is holding on to that tool. What I'm going to do is come down here now and choose Make Gauge in Position. When I do that, this is going to allow us to rotate the driven points of the cutter. And now I can come down to that theoretical corner right here, and instantly you see that I'm driven by, again, that X pickup, Z pickup, while the tool's at that B-axis angle of 45. Now, what's even cooler about this, if I come down here, is I can change to the center point if I want, I can change to this driven point, which makes no sense, granted, but it's just showing you that every change you make dynamically updates within the Top Solid software. Once you have the driven point the way you want it, you can validate, and the operation is up to date.